All right, we're gonna go ahead and cover 4.5 here. And I wanna take a look at uh, some limit stuff. We're gonna look at what is called Hopi Tiles Rule. Um, one of the ways to remember what this does, it's almost like, looks like the word hospital. And uh, it's like taking a limit to a hospital. So let's take a look at this limit we have right here uh, near X. So we have a graph of it there to the right. And we're gonna take a look at this. If we try to do the limit of it as it approaches X, right? We end up with the limit of x minus the sine of x over x cubed, and that ends up giving us 0 minus the sine of 0 over 0. And we can't do a something over 0, so that one doesn't work. So let's just try something. Let's go ahead and take the derivative of both the top and the bottom, and I don't mean do the derivative of the entire function. We're not doing uh, the quotient rule, we're just going to do the derivative of the top thing. So the derivative of x is 1, derivative of sine is cosine, and then in the bottom, the derivative of x cubed is 3x squared. Now if we try taking the limit of that, we get 1 minus the cosine of 0 over, a no, again, again, a 0. Uh, so that's not good. We, we can't divide by 0, so that doesn't work. So let's try doing this derivative thing one more time, the derivative of the numerator. That gives us a zero. Derivative of cosine is negative sine, so this becomes plus sine x. Over top of, this becomes 6x. Okay, and again, I'm not doing the quotient rule, just doing the derivative of the numerator over the derivative of the denominator. And this will give me then something over zero again. So that again isn't really working for us. So let's try, uh, let's try again. Let's do another one. Here, we've got the limit as x goes to zero, and this time the derivative of sine is cosine on the numerator, and the derivative of 6x is just six. And so now if we take the limit, we've got the cosine of zero over six, which is cosine of zero is one, and the sixth. So here, we actually have something. We have a one-sixth. And if you come over here and look at this graph, if we could somehow zoom into this, right, like this, we have 0.65, and then it comes over here into point, this is, or 0.165, this is 0.166, and then right here, so this is the 0.166, and then right there, on that spot right there, is actually 0.166. And then it just keeps repeating, six. So that just keeps repeating, which if you know, equals one sixth. And what did we come up with as uh, our answer down here by taking the derivative of what was on the top and what was on the bottom? One sixth. So evidently we may have found something right here that can help us. So what we had before with this uh, specific form that we started with of this function, was what is called an indeterminate form. Basically, it's a meaning ex expression that we cannot evaluate, and we call that an indeterminate form, okay? Uh, and it has many appearances. Some is zero over zero, uh, some infinity over infinity, or infinity times zero. So these kind of things where, uh, we get this kind of indeterminate form when we try to do the limit. So let's suppose that f of a equals g of a equals zero and that f and g are differentiable on an open interval i containing a and that g prime of x equals or does not equal zero on i if x does not equal a. Then what we're basically saying is the limit of the numerator function divided by the denominator function as x goes to a, if that is something that's basically that we cannot do it's indeterminate, that that same limit will then equal um, the limit as x goes to a of the derivative of the numerator divided by the derivative of the denominator, uh, assuming that the limit on the right-hand side exists, okay? Uh, so basically what this is telling us, if we want to determine the limit from functions that may give us indeterminate forms, uh, we wanna do this. We wanna determine that the limit uh, is in an indeterminate form, which we did on the previous one, because if it's in a determinate form, you don't want to do this. You just want to stop, 
all right? Don't go past a form that does actually have, um, it does actually have a limit. So we're worried about ones where we're in, I need to learn how to spell indeterminate, that are indeterminate form. That's the ones we want. If they're indeterminate, then we can do this. Once you get to a point where it's determined, you stop. Okay, that's what we did over here. This was indeterminate, this was indeterminate, this was indeterminate, this was determinate, we stopped. We didn't go any further. If you keep going further, if you do the derivative of the numerator over the derivative of the denominator for something that is determinate, you're going to mess it up. So don't, don't go past the point where as soon as you can, you can take the limit. So take the derivative of the numerator, take the derivative of the denominator, Uh, and do not use do not use the quotient rule. All right, of the original function. Okay, we're just wanting to do derivative of the numerator and derivative of the denominator, and then see if you can take the limit of the derivative of the numerator divided by the derivative of the denominator, and then just keep repeating that steps as long as you get indeterminate. forms. As long as you keep getting an indeterminate form, keep going. Once you get a real value, stop. That value is your limit. Don't go any further. Uh, also, this works for one-sided limits. Okay, so let's take a look at some that give us zero divided by zero. Uh, in this one, uh, you try to do this and it's not going to work. So I'm, we'll look at the first one here. So we try to do this limit we end up with divided by zero, doesn't work. So let's do limit as x goes to zero, and we're gonna take the derivative. On the numerator, that's three minus, derivative sine is cosine over one. This is no longer uh, indeterminate, that means we can just plug in three minus the cosine of zero. A cosine of zero is one, and so three minus one is two, and there's your answer, all right? This next one, I'm gonna leave for you to try. I'll actually go ahead and tell you, you should get 1 12th. And you can take a look back at the notes to see uh, what it is, okay? So here, watch out for real values. Okay, uh, if you try to do this one, you plug in zero, you have zero plus zero squared, uh, and that's not gonna work. So you have to actually start doing these derivatives. So uh, let's do limit as x goes to zero. Zero, derivative of cosine is negative sine, so plus sine of x over top of one plus two x. And if we plug in, right, if we plug in zero now, we don't get a zero in the denominator anymore. We can actually plug this in, the sine of zero is one, and then down here we have uh, we have one plus one plus zero, and so this gives us a one here. But imagine you had kept going, all right? So here we can stop. But imagine you looked at this and you're like, oh look, I've got a zero in the denominator there, and you had kept going. What would happen? So you should stop. This should be your answer. But what if you kept going? You'd get the limit as x goes to zero right, of derivative of sine is cosine over derivative of one is zero, and the derivative of that is two. And then if you tried to plug this in, cosine of zero is one, and two is two, you would get a one half, all right? But this is wrong, this is wrong. You needed to stop here. You need to stop up here, okay? So don't go past it, because you go one step past it, and suddenly you've got the wrong answer, okay? So don't go past where it will actually work out for you. All right, let's take a look. Uh, there are some more here. Uh, again, I want you to practice with these. The best thing you can do is practice. So try this one, you should get negative one eighth. Try this one as well, you should get one half. All right, try those, see if you get those answers, and then take a look and see what you end up getting. Uh, 
same thing here. I know this video is a lot of you trying, but uh, you know, try this one as well and then see my notes to see, because there's not a lot of explanation to just show you working it out. But try this one, you should get one. Try this one, you should also get a one. I'd like you to try the next two as well. These should be zeros, so just try these in place of watching the video and then check the notes to see how I work it out, especially if you don't get that answer. Even if you get the answer, you probably wanna you know, take a look at it anyway. Um, over here, I'm gonna leave some for you to try. Don't try this one. I think it would be better to do uh, limit of x going to negative pi from the negative direction and do pi, x plus pi times the cotangent of x. Try that one, you should get a one. And then try this one, you should get a zero. Okay, and then that is pretty much it. So what I want you to do is, you know, pretty simple lesson here, derivative of, of the first thing, derivative of the second thing. Uh, just remember with some of these like this one, uh, you don't have a fraction there. So you might have to do something like make this, you know, like that, right? So you may have to do something like that in order to get this into a form where you can do Hopi Tao's rule, just, just as a little heads up. But give them a try and see what you get and then check the notes and make sure you got them right and let me know if you have any questions, all right? So that's pretty much it for this lesson. Thanks a lot.